All right, section 1-1 one, one deals with rectangular coordinates. Now remember, this is kind of a supplement to what we worked on in class. So obviously you won't have the question and answer time, but you can reverse things and pause things and go back and check things over again for review. Uh, so hopefully this will help you out a little bit. All right, first things first, uh, some of the things that you should get out of this section, you should be able to plot points on the Cartesian plane. You should be able to use the distance formula to find distance between two points. You'll be introduced to midpoint formula and be able to use that to find the midpoint of a segment. And you should also be able to use a coordinate plane to model and solve some real world problems. Um, first of all, what is that Cartesian plane? Well, let's take a little or a different look here for a second. Um, Cartesian plane basically is just going to start out with stuff that you guys have already worked with. You maybe just used a little different terminology with it, but same thing. We've always dealt with it as the xy axis or xy coordinates. So you've got your x-axis, you've got your y-axis, and then some of the parts on the graph here, remember where everything starts, right in the middle, that's your origin. Uh, it's also divided up into four quadrants. So this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Now each of these is made up of a whole bunch of ordered pair possibilities. So we have an x value and a y value. When we group those, we get ordered pairs. And again, this is some older material, but just some review to keep you on top of things. Within each of these, everything has a sign. So in quadrant one, everything is to the right of the y-axis, so it'll be positive. Everything is above the x-axis, so it'll be positive. So every ordered pair will have two positive values in quadrant one. In quadrant two, you go to the left, so it'll be a negative, and you're still above the y or x-axis, so that'll be a positive. Everything in quadrant three, you're to the left and down, so the left gets you a negative x value, down gets you a negative y value, and then quadrant four, you're to the right and down, giving you a positive x value, negative y value. And that's always going to hold true uh, within the quadrants. Now within the x, y system here, or again we talked about this being Cartesian coordinate system, Within this system, we talked about the ordered pairs. Pretty simple. This is just our x-coordinate. This is our y-coordinate as far as getting directions. All right. The only other part of this that really we have to worry about is, again, order. And because ordered pairs, the term order, it does matter which order you do this. So a couple things just to keep you out of trouble here. If I give an ordered pair of 2, 3, and how that compares to the ordered pair of 3, 2. Remember the x value, x's are always telling you how far to go left or right. So this one's saying go 2 to the right, and then the y values tell you up or down, go up 3. Just reversing the numbers does make a difference because this says go right 3 and up 2. Again, not to insult anyone's intelligence, but it's a quick and simple uh, mistake that a lot of people will make, so take your time with those as you work through them. Uh, once you get a group of ordered pairs all put together on a line, one thing that you get out of that is we can end up getting scatter plots. Oops. I'm not sure why this isn't working for me, but let's try it again here. Um, if you end up getting scatter plots, basically what's happening is you're still going to set up with 
your Cartesian coordinate system. So we've got our y-axis and our x-axis. And then all we're really doing is adding a bunch of ordered pairs. So if I have an ordered pair here, ordered pair here, ordered pair here, and however many ordered pairs I've got, basically what happens is when I put them all together, and they can be spread however the information is given to us, now we've got what's known as a scatter plot. And again, you've been doing scatter plots for many years. Sometimes they have a nice pattern to work with where you can follow a pattern, make predictions off of that. Other times it's truly just scattered. So you'll do some problems working with uh, the scatter plots as you go through these. Alright, what about some uh, review on a couple of the formulas that you'll end up using here. Uh, we've got one theorem, Pythagorean theorem, and again, something you've used quite a bit. And basically, the Pythagorean theorem is dealing with right triangles. Sorry about that. Pretty good triangle. Uh, right triangle, hypotenuse is always the longest side. The other two sides are the legs. So again, the hypotenuse on most of these formulas, we're always going to use that under the term for C. So once you've got that hypotenuse set up, the Pythagorean theorem basically just says this. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So for this to actually be a triangle, let's clean this up a little bit for you. For this to be a triangle, and to go a step further, for it to be a right triangle, it has to fit that form. So the sum of the squares of the two shorter legs has to equal the square of the longer leg. If that's not true, it's still possible to have a triangle, it just won't be a right triangle. Now, we can do a little bit of manipulation with this and we can say here's point B for that vertex, point A for that vertex, and point C for this vertex. One thing we can do is take this formula from Pythagorean Theorem and like I said we can do some manipulation. So one way I can do this is using some inverse operations which I can cancel our square here by doing the square root of both sides. So on the left side, the inverse operations just cancel each other, and I get C equals A squared plus B squared, that sum under the square root. Now, basically what A is finding is going to be my difference in my x's, B is the difference in y's. So if we substitute that a little bit, we can actually end up going this way. I can take x1 minus x2, square that, that takes the place of a, I can do y1 minus y2, square that, that takes the place of b, and find the square root of that. So on this one, maybe the a value was my x1, y1, and the b value was x2, y2. So basically what I'm trying to find is this distance right here. And there's my formula. So this is your distance formula. Alright, let's take a look at an example of this. Let's give ourselves two different points here. So the value for point A is just going to be at negative 2, 1. Point B is at 3, 4. What I want to find is the distance from A to B. So I'm going to let this be x1, this be y1, 
This can be x2, this can be y2, it's interchangeable. You could let this be x2, y2, this be x1, y1, that's your choice. So if we substitute into our formula, again remember, we've got x1 minus x2, our difference of x's, that's squared, same for the y's, and then find the square root. So let's substitute in our values. So if x1 is negative 2, x2 would be 3. So I'd have negative 2 minus 3. That's all squared. Same for the y's. 1 minus 4. So 1 minus 4, all squared. And I can find the square root of that value. So let's simplify. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. That's all squared. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. That's all squared. And then find the square root of that. So two more steps. Negative 5 times itself is 25. Negative 3 times itself is 9. And then I can simplify one more step and add that up. So that's going to tell me if I had these two points somewhere on my Cartesian coordinate system or my xy axis, I could find the distance from A to B, and it would be square root of 34. Again, depending on how accurate you need to be or how you need to understand the problem, that's approximately 5.83 if we round it to the nearest hundredth. All right. Now, there's a couple things you can do for a shortcut here. Instead of going through the whole formula here, this x1 minus x2 sometimes is just known as delta x or the change in x. So how much does the x change from one value to the next? We also can do delta y, which is just telling me the same for the y values. How far has one changed to get to the other? So now I can shorten this up a little bit, and especially if the numbers are nice to work with, and I can go find the change in x, square it, find the change in y, square that, find the sum, and the square root of that. So if I was going to do that for this same problem and do the shortcut, I could just do this. Think of a number line. From negative 2 to 3, how much did the x change? In this case, it changed 5. So I'll square that. The y's. From 1 to 4, that's a change of 3. Square that. So basically, we jumped right down to this step here. And because it's squaring both of them, the signs don't have any circumstance in this one. So simplify again. 5 squared is 25. 3 squared is 9. And obviously, same problem. We're going to get the same answer. Now, if you can get the square root here, and if it simplifies, make sure that you simplify and reduce this down as far as you can.